Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Black Parents Aging. It's Olivia here. I don't have Nicola with me today, but I do have a special guest, and I'm excited for you to hear from her. As I've been doing these interviews, I've been thinking if we had to have a theme, I think it would be like health and wealth. And so this is on the wealth side, and I think you're going to get some very useful information today. So make sure that you listen very closely. And so I am going to welcome to the podcast, Tyra Ward. Hi, Tyra. Hi, Olivia. How are you? Thank I'm you so good. Much. Welcome. Yes, thank I'm you so I'm excited much. to have you. I am also, we've been trying to get it going, so I'm glad we're finally here. I'm ready to share some information. So Absolutely. Now, you are one of my mom's favorite <laughs> people, so she will be thrilled that you are on this podcast. She she loves you. Um, I love me some her. We just... <laughs> I love her. Outside of the work, we can just be laid back and just chit chat. And yes. it's like, oh, wait, we started at one, but now it's like 3 30. Like, where? That's her. That is I definitely love her. I love her. Yes, yes. So, before we get too far in, I usually let guests introduce themselves. Um, so, tell us a little bit about you, uh, who you work for, what your position is, and then just how you even got to that got to that place. Okay. Yes. Awesome. So as Olivia mentioned, I am Tyra Ward Littles. Um, I am the outreach manager with McIntyre Seed. Um, I've been with McIntyre Seed since 2017 and Seed is actually an acronym for Sustainable Environment and Economic Development. Um, so McIntyre Seed does a lot of work, you know, well, our main goal was to strengthen low wealth families and improve neglected um, low wealth rural communities um, through asset based economic development, education reform, um, empowerment, and environmental preservation. Um, but I got into this work, and it, and Libby, you could take it out if you need to. But I, I really, I was really thrown into this. Okay, work. but that's how some of the best things happen unexpectedly. Yes. So tell tell us. I, I was thrown into this work. Um, I graduated college um, with just a biology degree. And just, I, just a biology Yeah, degree. just a biology degree. But okay. I, my main goal, what I wanted to do since I was a little girl, was to be a dentist. But, you know, I had some bumps in the road. You know, I was a young mother. Um, so I had to care for a child, but I also had to work. So uh -huh. I had to care for him and also go to work while doing school. And so I didn't go off the college like I had planned to. I planned to attend the University of Georgia, but that didn't happen because I didn't want to, you know, leave my child with my family for them to raise. So I went to a local college here um, in Georgia, in coastal Georgia, and I got my biology degree and I was headed to um dental school okay i had my second son okay so okay like, so at that time you know i was just still working you know i i had a little family so i had to work so i was working at belt work my way up from associate to like a counter manager at um the makeup station I, I'm people are probably familiar with estee lauder i was the counter manager at estee lauder but that just didn't work. It didn't work for me because with those retail jobs, you have to work holidays. You have yes. to work weekends. And here I am, a mother, a young mother at that. And it's like, you know, when, when you're a young mother, you don't want to miss out on anything. Of course. You really just don't know. You don't know. You know, I have my family there saying, hey, we can help you. But I didn't know. So yeah. I was like, it's not going to work for me. Well, you know, um, my son's dad, um, his his father is actually the executive director of McIntyre Seed. And um, he was like, well, you know, just come work. I, I think I was out of work for maybe a month. Um, he was like, just come work, you know, you know, just help me out this week. Well, this week turned into like <laughs> almost six years and I'm like, I'm still here. But, you know, again, and once I got into the work, I was this is not for me because I wasn't used to it. I just yes. was not used to it. I didn't go to school for this. Yes. I'm like, 
I do not want to do this work. And I mean, people out there in the nonprofit world, they can attest to what I'm saying. Like, you really got, you have to think and you have to think strategically. You have to, you know, you have to keep up with data. You have to do this reporting. And it was like, I just do not want to do it. I tried and tried and tried to get away. But as I continue to do the work, I'm, I started learning and I'm like, oh, wait, I can do this. You know, I've been in customer service, you know, since right. I was a teen. So yeah. it's like, you know how to talk to people, you know how to work with people. Like, and then it became, Olivia, I tell you, it became a breeze. And then, you know, like the age that, the age range I typically work with is like people of about 40, 40 to 60s. And it's just like, you work with these people, you don't, they, they come to you like worthless, like, how can you help me? And it's just like, I'm really that first point of contact that they, the first face that they see. And it's, it, it just melts my heart. Like I treat every person I encounter, I treat them like my grandparents. I treat them like my mom. Cause it's like, they need you. And what am I going to do when my mom or my grandmother, needs? I'm going to be there. You know, show so, up. I'm, I'm going to show up and that's what I do every single time. And you mentioned earlier, like your mom, I tell anyone I talk, I said, that's just, that's my, that's my grandma. Like <laughs> I treat her as, I treat her like that. She is so dear to me. And, and that's what it's all about. Like, like I said, I, I, I did not want to do this, but it just, it became my baby. And it's something that I'm so passionate about. And I know we'll get deep into it. So, so let me just say, yeah. yes, we'll, we'll get into people like, okay, well, what, what are y'all talking about? But right, what are y'all talking about? I will yeah. say that you are so good with people. Um, and so you have, you are such an asset to the organization because even Outside, my mom loves you. Outside of my mom, I've had clients to come here from estate planning that also um, work with you and you, they they rave about you. They they love you. And so that customer service background um, really has helped you in this, in this area. And sometimes, you know, we start off thinking we're going to go, go one place and God's like, mm, right. no, I, really, you're going over here. And so- That's right. Um, you can just see that you are good at the work, that you have a passion for work. So I wanted you on this episode because I know a lot of us that are helping aging parents or grandparents, um, those parents or grandparents may have land and they may have land that they're not necessarily doing anything with, or we may have inherited land and we may just it just may be sitting there and not making any money for us, not doing anything. And so that is specifically why I wanted to speak to you today and talk about Macintosh Seed and the work you do. And so I know you said Macintosh Seed stands for, Seeds has stands for um, some other words, but I want you to kind of break that down even further to explain like what is the purpose and the yeah. goal of Macintosh Seed? Yeah, and again, um, the the first focus was to work in the local community, which is Macintosh County. Macintosh County is like, it was like poverty level. Yes. Before, um, you know, Macintosh Seed was established. So, you know, they held a meeting and was like, what can we do to shape this community? What can we do to turn this community around? So initially they just wanted to, you know, focus on the low wealth families um, and improve, improve these areas around that have been neglected. Um, they wanted to bring blacks and whites together. So that was their main goal. You know, they did the food banks, the community gardens, but, and um, I, I'm going to mention our executive director, Mr. John Littles, and assistant managing director, um, Cheryl Peterson, they will travel. They will travel and travel to Mississippi, Alabama, doing the same work here in those, um, in those local communities up there in those states, um, Mississippi and Alabama and Florida. But as they were traveling, they were, you know, they will see, they will see timber. And when they go again, the timber was cut, right? The timber was harvested. Okay, fast forward a few years, they will go again. They see the timber growing. So it's like, 
well, what's going on here? You right. know, how are these families, you know, what what is going on? How is the timber being harvested? And now how is it just growing out of nowhere? Like what's going on? What are the processes in place? And why is this not happening in our communities, in our African African American communities here in McIntosh County? So as they would research and, you know, ask others, they would learn like, they, they are landowners out there, landowners who do not look like us, yes. who have practices in place for their lands, for their properties. Um, so that's where we started. We were granted the opportunity to apply for um, a grant named the Sustainable Forest and African American Land Retention Program. Um, so we did not, we were not granted the award. Um, I'm sorry, we probably don't need to fix that. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, um, but we were not awarded the first the first round, um, and this this program started in 2012. But the second round we were awarded in 2016, and we are the host site um, for Georgia. So McIntosh Seed is the host site for the Georgia Sustainable Forest and African American Land Retention Program, um, SFLR for short, and that program targets. African American landowners with about five to ten acres of more land. I say five to ten because if you have one lake, one acre, I'm gonna help you. I I do not discriminate. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, you need me? Come on, I got you. Right. Um, yeah. So we, you know, target African American landowners throughout the state of Georgia who have five to ten acres of land, and it's just forested land, and it's just there. And you know, we're like. How can we engage you? What can we do to take you to the next level? Um, so I'll use your mom, for example. She came to me like, I've been looking and looking yes. and looking. Yes. And I have not found anyone who can help me. And she said, I came across, I think it was an article or, or a blog or something. She's a researcher for sure. So yeah. I'm sure. Like, I came across it. And she called me immediately and I just welcomed her with arms. And she's like, where have you been? And I said, well, we've been here. You so know? when was, when was McIntosh Seed founded? Um, 1998. 1998, but it got the grant or the seed in, in 2016. 2016. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, a, a lot of, the, a lot of the work before then was to strengthen the lo local communities. Got um, you. Yeah, different disparities um, that was happening in the community. But again, what triggered this was them going back and forth from Alabama, Mississippi. And it's like, how are they doing this? Why is this not happening in our area? You know, in our community. So yeah, and it and it just it just went on from there. And now um this our, my SFLR program, because it's my baby. Yes. So they're like here you go and you just take care and for the longest time I shied away from it because it's like you know I really wasn't confident and again I it just wasn't something that I was known to do sure that community that could um that customer service came in and it's like I just took off with it but I'm here to help I want to help people who look like us who are lost who do not know who to turn to they know they have this land they know like, yeah, all I'm doing is paying the taxes. I want to shift that mindset. Like, yes. yeah, you're paying the taxes, but let's figure out a way to make this land work for you. Absolutely. Let's figure out a way to make the land generate some revenue for you. Yeah. So what would you say as you travel around and talk to different landowners trying to get them to be a part of your program? What are some of the things you see? What are some of the barriers that you encounter um, when we're talking about black landowners and getting them on board, yeah, th this is that that's great. This is great. For the longest time, it was trust, trust. You yes, have to build trust, and I, I, I couldn't understand because I'm like, I'm African American, they're African American, but they're still hesitant. But it's because all of the things that they've had to endure, you know what they went through a hundred years ago, that that is still implemented into their minds. They're like, no, I don't care who you are. If you come to me saying you can help me, or if you say you can help me get some funds through the government, it's like, wait a minute, 
I'm not sharing any more information with Absolutely. you. Absolutely. So, so I'm telling you, Olivia, I've had to build trust. Yes. With every landowner. And I can speak to them, but I go at their own their own their pace. I yes. go at their pace. And it's like, hey, if you need a break. If we need to make a take a pause, we can do that. Just yes. tell me when you're ready to you get started because it's it is confidential. Your your property, all of this stuff is confidential, it's sacred to them. Absolutely. It's passed down from generations and generations. Some of these, I, I still work with a lady. Um, her husband passed on, but her and her husband worked hard to acquire over a hundred acres. And it's mm -hmm. like you know, I don't want anything to mess up what I've accomplished or what I've acquired. So I just take it step by step. But trust has been, you know, the biggest barrier. Yeah. And then them just not understanding. Them not understanding. So it's like, okay, I have to figure out where you are right now and what, what I need to do to input. What what can I do to help you or help you along this process process? But again, trust. Trust was the biggest thing. Yeah. So same. Like, I think across the board, um, yeah. I've talked to this season, we've, we've talked to some doctors, trust mm. the biggest thing, estate planning, because we have to get all in your business and okay. know your business trust. And so trust is that, that thing that you have to earn with yes. the client um, or the customer before they're willing to do anything with you. So if I, if there is someone who has five to 10 acres um, of land and nothing's happening on it, they pay the taxes, they're proud that they own land, but it's not making any money for them or there is no development, there is no movement. What are some of the possibilities? Um, because I think sometimes we don't even understand like what could possibly happen. What are some of the possibilities that could happen on that land? Yeah, so um, I, I like to start off, of course, with the enrollment into, sure. into the FLR program, and it's all free. But I want to know what the goals are. Okay. What do you want to get out of this, you know, your property? What do you want to get out of your land? So I asked them to share some goals, but then I have I have like a, a questionnaire that I go through. Like, okay. Do you, um, do you have a farm and track number through the Farm Service Agency? Most of my landowners do not. They do right. not know what that is. It's foreign to them. Um, and so if they say no, okay, do you have your deed in the plat to your property? Again, a lot of these landowners, they do not because it was passed down. So even right. if they do have the deed, it could be from 1830. And it's like, they're trying to um, figure out like- And it says somebody I else's name. Somebody else's name. Yes. So I'm like, you. We gotta go see Olivia. We gotta talk to. Him. <laughs> we gotta get this deed. You know, we gotta get this redeeded or something. Um, but in order to acquire that farm and track number or establish the farm records through the Farm Service Agency, you need that deed in plat. So, and I, I'm, I wanna, I'm gonna go um, a little left here. Okay, go ahead we've had these issues. So they, they have the property or it's family owned, but they do not have the deed. Mm -hmm. So it's like, now we're at a stop. And for, for a few years, um, since I started to work, we did have like a legal side. We had, um, an in-house attorney and he would have to, you know, do the title searches, do the reading, all things like that. So, that's I just wanted to shed some importance on that because it's important for where we're gonna try to go. Um, you need the farm and track number to be eligible for eligible for any of the resources that are available out there. So. And can I just put a pause here because also sometimes what people think they own when we look at the deed and we do the research, you may own more, you may own less. Like yes. and and I. In our community, community, we do a lot of like just what people have told us, That's and right. we don't necessarily go find the legal paperwork to see like what actually is the case. And so for them to even help you, they need to know what do you really own? 
Um, because we can't make a plan on what you think you own. We have to make a plan on what you actually own. Um, so, okay. So the survey comes in. That's where yes. the luxury survey comes in. I'm glad you mentioned that. It's important. Like I encourage anyone who has property to invest in a boundary survey, invest in a survey because you need to know your boundaries. You need to know like, Hey, if I'm about to harvest some timber, I want to know the boundaries because Absolutely. I don't want to cut the next neighbor's timber. And now we're in a, in a lawsuit. Dispute. Now, yes. Yes. So sure. in a dispute because you've cut some, some timber that's not yours. So right. it's, it's critical to um, have that boundary survey. So that's another thing that I asked them because if not, we do, we're partnered um, with a gentleman who goes out and, you know, complete the boundary surveys for us. But yeah, so I wanted, I wanted to share the importance on that farm and track number um, because if they do not have that, we got to figure out how can we get it. And that, that application is very unique. So that's where I come in. Like, okay. I, I'm the connector. I'm the connector between the landowner and these agencies. Um, yes. US, USDA Farm Service Agency, um, USDA NRCS, which is Natural Resource Conservation Service, the U.S. Forest Service, Georgia Forestry Commission. And by the way, those are some of our, our partners, our pivotal partners. Um, but I serve as that connector because, again, the majority of the people I work with, they have no clue. what. And doing. I will say... Mm -hmm. We, when we like you're in the field so it's it's easy for you you get it now for people that are that are coming to it and they don't know anything they need someone to serve as a yes. connector because it can get very overwhelming very quickly and there's all of these letters and you don't know what they mean and like even when I go with my mom place I'm like what does that let me I need a notepad just to write down what all of these different letters mean right. I do not know and so I you that role is so important so yes. that landowners don't get overwhelmed and just give up right and I, and I, I ask those questions to get their mind you know to start thinking like oh wait she's asking the question maybe I do not know the answer the answer or the who is the source I can go to for that so again if you're you do not have a clue in the world what to do I ask you if you have that farm and track number if not okay I hope you establish those records and again you need that deed in the plat so the is a farm I number like a social security number for a person or EIN number for a business like what why is that farm number so important they it's just like a marker on okay. your property. Um, so if you were to ever look into like a farm loan or in the environmental quality incentives program, equipped for short, is through the Natural Resource Conservation Service, NRCS. For me, I want each landowner that I work with to have that farm and track number to be able to um, take advantage of the funds and the resources that are available ah, okay. through, that, through that equip program. So the, normally that's my main goal for that. Got you. Um, the equip, the environmental quality incentives program is a program that could potentially reimburse up to 90% of the practices that these landowners would. Now this is important. Yes. This is very important information. <laughs> very important. And um. Like you said, we're targeting Black um, aging parents or the next generation of African-Americans. So if you're African-American, if you're a veteran or if you're, you know, a minority or a woman, a female landowner, you get that 90 percent. Ah. So, yes. So okay. it's extremely important to have that forum number because if you do not, you're not, you're you're ineligible. You Got can't it. So it makes it. you eligible for the this pot of money. Yes, it makes you Got eligible you. for this pot of money. So I stress that to my landowners. And again, like I said, if they do not have their deed, that's when I turn them over to an attorney who can try to help, you know, fix that situation. Um, but then I, another question I ask is, have you ever worked with a forester? Have you ever worked with a forest consultant? Mm -hmm. Most of them are like, no. Most of these people have never visited the property. All they know is that they own it and they've been yes. paying taxes. 
Yeah. You know, I work with a lot of absentee landowners um, who have property in Georgia, but they live out of state. Absolutely. Yes. So it's important to go out on that visit. I, we call it a site visit, a site visit to the property. I like to get that scheduled immediately um, to see, you know, what what do you have on this property? I go out with the force. And this is where that partnership of the Georgia Forestry Commission comes in. We have a great partnership um, with them, um, but we work with the stewardship coordinator. And what he does, he was local here in McIntosh County, but, he, you know, he was promoted. So all I have to do, Olivia, is type up the email, hey, I need a site visit done in Carroll County. Um, and he forwards the email to the, the county forester and it's like, boom, we scheduled. So that partnership right there is also pivotal and vital to, to me because again, I'm not a forester. I, I, I'm just doing this work. You know, I'm helping my people. I love to help my people. I want to be of service to my people, but I'm not a forester. So I cannot go out to your property and tell you like, hey, yeah, you can harvest some timber right now. And then you could come. I can't do that. So it's important to have those forestry professionals on your side um, as a partner, because when it's time to do the site visit, you know, they're there, they're observing the property, they're, they're assessing, you know, the timber or they're assessing the property like, hey, okay, this will benefit you. Yes. This will not benefit you. Yeah. And like I said, ask for the goal. So if the goal of the landowner does not align with what they can actually do on their property. They need to know that. They need to know. I, yeah. And I want to be able to give them that. So that's why we have those site visits and the forces out there. And from that visit, Olivia, the landowner can either request a two-year management plan, um, forest management plan, or a 10-year management plan. And that plan would tell the landowner what they can do for the next 10 years. So like this podcast is targeting, you know, black families aging. This is for that next gen who's caring for the Absolutely. The aging, yeah, who's caring for the aging, you know, black mothers, black fathers, black grandmothers, grandfathers. God forbid something happens, you know, to their loved one. Now they have this property in their hands. What do I do? You're going to have that notebook of With everything. The plan. With a plan. And it's, I love it's it. very detailed, you know, like, hey, it's January. You can either, you know, plant some trees or you can wait. It's very detailed. They I've seen my you. moms. Yes, yes. And she yep. shows it like, you know, like a year, you know, like how you would show your yearbook. Like she, yes. she is very proud of it. And I actually, when the forester came to walk my mom's property, she was sick. So me and my dad walked it with him. Um, so I walked it and he was able to point out plants that were poisonous, you know, yes. plants that were native to this area, the different types of trees, like underbrush, like all the things that I had no idea about. I was looking right. for snakes and bugs, but he yes, exactly. <laughs> was able to point out all the things. And so that was really helpful. And, and does that, is that, is that cost? It's all free. It is all, all it's free. And it is, it's, it's free, free from the forest commission. It's free from um, the NRCS that I mentioned earlier. All of this should be, be happening. You know, they are supposed to be doing outreach but it doesn't happen. Yes. So that's where I come in. It's like, who gets this information into our communities? Because they're going to the other communities, but they're not going into our communities. Absolutely. That's in African-American. So I come in and like try to provide that outreach. I've even had, for example, I've had someone from the agency ask me like, how are you doing this work? How are you getting the people? And you know, we host meetings at churches. Um, you can speak to that. I came to Ms. Um, your mom's church. Came to our church, yes. And, and yes. we do presentations, but they weren't doing that. So yeah. there, it's like a light bulb clip, like, oh, we can do that. Because believe it or not, they have quotas or they have things that they have to meet also. Markers. But mm -hmm. right. But they can't meet them if they don't get the, the people that you know they're targeting because right now it's a lot of funding targeting us African Americans because they want to help because we've been unserved 
for so long. Yes. So it's critical. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, of course, the podcast is running long because this episode is running long because there's a lot to talk about. But let me like try to wrap this up. So when we think about landowners, yeah, if there is someone that is listening to this episode and they are a home, a, a landowner of five to 10 or more, right? It can be more than 10. But, oh, yes. I yeah. work with 400 yeah yeah so if you have more than five acres um that you own and you're not doing anything with it and this has piqued your interest just to see what the possibilities are what are the next steps that they should take they should contact me they should email me they should call me um but we do have a website okay um, is and I can I can give it to you and you can share it, but it's um w.mactarc.org. And then on that website, we have like a little box, an informational box. They can put their information there and like it'll come directly to me. Um, but please feel free to contact me because I'm here. I'm looking for you and you're probably looking for me, but you just do not know of you don't me. Know so where to look. Yes. Don't know where to look. So I am here and I like to hit the ground running. So I go at the pace of the landowners. If they tell me like, whoa, Tyra, we move too fast. Let's slow it down. I'm like, okay. But then again, I don't want them to get complacent. I don't want them to get at a standstill. I want yes. us to see keep moving. Yes. progress. I want to see progress. I want to get them to the next step of their success. Because again, make this land work for you instead of you working. Absolutely. Yes, yes. And I will say, I know that if you contact Macintosh C, they have all sorts of conferences. Um, yes. That all they sorts of education. Year. Yes, conferences. I host outreach meetings um, almost monthly, you know, just to share information, educational outreach meetings. So I can have someone on there from the Georgia Forestry Commission, someone on there from USDA NRCS the um, Farm Service Agency. So, you know, the year just started. So I'm trying to outline um, my my dates yes. for, the, for these um, meetings, but they're coming. So I would love to have anyone attend. We, we try to dig deep into education, but we want these landowners to know like, hey, we're here. Yes. There is assistance available and it's available to you. So let's take advantage of these opportunities, these resources that are available. I love that. And I will ask that you send me the dates that you have and we will share them as well. One last thing, because I know that there are people that listen to the podcast that do not live in Georgia. So if there are people listening and they are property owners and they don't live in Georgia, are there organizations like this in other states and how would they find them? Yes. Um, so SFLR, again, which is the Sustainable Force and African-American Land Retention Program, it's a host, um, it's a network of eight sites Okay. in eight states. Um, so Magasar Seed is just a Georgia host site, um, but there- What other um, states? Do you know the, yeah. what are the other states? Yep. Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, Alabama, Mississippi, Texas, in Arkansas. So those, uh, including McIntyre those seven other states are doing this exact work. So um, again, there's also um, a website for SFLR. So if you just go on Google and type on, type SFLR.com or SFLRnetwork.org, you should be able to pull it up. But again, like if you come to me and you're from out of state, I will direct you to the, the main source, the main person you need to talk with. And if, because, and, and if you, you know, watch this interview or listen to this interview and it's like, I only want to work with Tyra. I can help you, in, in, you know, to an extent because sure. I want everything to be right. Um, that's going on in your state, but yes, there are seven other states doing this exact same work. Yeah. So basically, Tyra is the plug. So what we I, wanted to <laughs> <Yeah. you, laughs> <but, see> <laughs> go go see her, call her, email her, um, yeah. and schedule a time to talk with her. Because what we want to do is we want to create wealth within our community. That's it. And if you have land, they're they're not making any more of that. 
So you have a very precious asset and you want it to work for you. And so this is just one way and one avenue that you can get jump started with really looking at your land in a different way um, and looking at it as a true asset. And yes. just something that I got to pay a property tax on once a year. Right. So, let's, mm -hmm. Go ahead. Let's, have, no, I was just saying, let's stop looking at land as a liability. Yes. This is a good thing. Absolutely. And if you, if you connect with the right resources, with the right people, the right professionals, that land is going to be generating some revenue and it's going to create generational wealth. And I mean, I, I just, I just love it. I, I love it. It I literally love it. radiates off you. Okay, Tyra, we got to go. But thank okay, you. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank I'm you, gonna get, Olivia. Thank I'm you. I'm going to get all the information from Tyra um, so I can share with you guys definitely her contact information so you can reach out. This may be the first of several um, episodes talking about this because yeah, I know there are a lot of landowners out there. Um, and it's more information. It's and more there's information. more information for sure. Um, but I think this was a great start to the conversation. Yes, yes let's a great start. start. Yes, thank start. you so much. You, you are very me. welcome. Thank you for coming on. As always, guys, we love to hear feedback. So if you want to hear more about land ownership and opportunities, please let us know. We'd love to have, have Tyra back and she can bring some of the other folks that work in this space um, for a more robust conversation. We're always open to new ideas for episodes. So check us out on our social media. Um, and until next time, talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you.